I guess the biggest risk was uh, our decision to set up Salesforce in Europe back in 2000 because at that stage I had a, a long and you know reasonably successful career with another a very good tech company and left there and all the trappings uh, to go to a three-man startup and uh, it was risky at the time now hindsight looks like a great decision but it was risky at the time. You know, proudest achievements to date is the success of Salesforce here in Europe, but particularly in Dublin, the fact that Dublin, we've managed to keep Ireland as a centre of uh, the Salesforce organisation in Europe. I mean, we're the, you know, one of the largest uh, hubs outside of the US, and the fact that we can do that from Ireland, from Dublin, is a, is a huge um, a, a huge deal for us, and it's something that makes me very proud. I think it makes me especially proud because it showcases what we can do here in Ireland. Yeah. You know, the fact that we can be a world-class player and still do it here from our home base. Well, I think that, you know, you can't be a one-trick pony. You have to keep innovating and you have to keep pushing the boundaries all the time. And I think that once you've got that uh, continuous push for better, better, never best, uh, you know, that you're pushing all the time, that that keeps the creativity there and it keeps an opportunity there and it keeps a sort of, uh, it keeps a, a playing field there, if you like, that, that everybody, uh, can do their best working. You know, I think that if you're ever at the stage where you, you feel that, well, we've only one reason for being and one uh, trick here, then people get stifled. But once you have the continuous belief in innovation, it allows that sort of platform for growth. I think that you have to remain true to yourself. I think that uh, a lot of people will fall for whatever the latest leadership, uh, you know, buzzwords are or, or the latest uh, um, leadership methodology but I think that the one thing that never fails and has never changed over time is authenticity. I think that once you remain true to yourself and your own values you've got to understand what your values are and you know that's not that easy to do that but you do have to understand what are your core values when you know when your back is really to the wall what do you stand for personally and I think that once you re remain authentic to those and true to those I think then they will stand you a good set being a leader irrespective of whatever the field of leadership you're in whether it's sports or business or uh, the public service whatever it is. I think that the one challenge for me growing as a leader, I mean, I've, I'm you know of a certain vintage, but I think that I'm challenged by the whole new workforce that we have. You know, the Gen Zs, the Millennials. I think they challenge people like me, and I think that they challenge us for the better. And I think there's a whole new way of thinking, and I think that that really is is what I need to do. I need to just make sure that I. Uh, that I understand what, what motivates the new generations in the workforce and I think that's the challenge and, and, and I think where I need to keep learning as a leader and one very interesting thing uh, I, I, we've actually int um, introduced reverse ent mentoring in our company so I'm being mentored by Gen Z which is very interesting I have two at home who mentor me all the time my children 18 and 21 but I've also formally been mentored by Gen Z uh, uh, some Gen Z workers people who joined us reasonably recently but uh, very bright people and um, they have fantastic outcomes on, on business and on yeah and, and how business uh, influences the world so I think that's a huge uh, excitement to me